Um, but um, so I, I make no uh, uh, guarantee about the quality of these images because there are anything from high res to much lower resolution. I mean, haven't looked at them large and this large yet. So if there's some pixelation, it's because this is all done for that. And uh, when Carol contacted me and said she wanted me to talk for an hour, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Nobody can talk about themselves for an hour. Uh, yeah. Nine ten. <laughs> that was my blue period. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're going to have to get the uh, things changed before it goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, it, oh, really? Yeah, the computer just went to sleep. You can have to faster so you can... <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. <laughs> That'll just wake them up when the so blue screen I, I comes So I did grow up, grow up in Las Cruces, and I, I got a, uh, a BFA from New Mexico State University, which was, you know, it was a Cal College. The art building burned down when I was a sophomore. It was not a high, <laughs> high priority. They were actually, in, in the art building was in some condemned barracks, which I think were left over from World War I. And, uh, but they did have, there was an old uh, WPA muralist who was the head of the art department, and he was just a really no-nonsense guy who taught you the basics. And you literally learned to draw. By the first day of drawing class, you drew a piece of paper on the ground perspective and then we worked up to a, a box and a cylinder and and then when you learn to draw from the figure you at first had to take an anatomy class uh, which I, I've never seen any other art school that kind of does it that way but and then I, I went to grad school at SMU because uh, the one art historian at New Mexico State was friends with the, the head of the department there who was also an art historian and, and um, uh, I kind of walked into a really good situation at the time. It was just a class full of amazing students. Uh, uh, it was a really small art department and two or three really great faculty members. And I don't think it's ever been that since because the faculty members are gone and the students have all gone on to higher glory. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely the runt of that litter. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 at least three of them have paintings in that the Whitney. One of them had three paintings by the time he was 35. Uh, even Julian Schnabel, does anybody recognize that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. He was there for a semester when I was there. So it was it was just an amazing uh, place to go to school. And Janine was there, although Janine Allen was there, but she was, I think she was an art historian and they yeah. didn't associate with, with the riffraff upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I started out as an oil painter, like everybody, and um, and had some success. Uh, but uh, literally, the my s the last year of graduate school, as I was getting ready for the graduate show, I started getting uh, having eye problems in one eye. Uh, it's a condition called iritis. It's like glaucoma, where your eye dries out. And I thought it was due to the fumes from the, the oil painting. And uh, it was treated, and it went away, and. In my mid-30s, it came back, and at that point, I pretty much had to give up oil painting. And so I was left in the lurch, uh, you know, change, you got to change your medium, and I never liked acrylic, and, and, uh, and I'd always dabbled in pastels. I had a, a box of new pastels that I'd use in video in class, and then I showed at a gallery in Houston for a while, and I was doing these big oil paintings, but they needed some filler between the oil paintings, and so I was doing these little pastel drawings. So when I stopped doing oil paintings, uh, I started taking the pastels a little more seriously. I was doing big charcoal drawings, and uh, kind of trying to do something with pastel, but at that time, uh, I don't think anybody really took pastel seriously. Uh, you know, you kind of, I, I wrote an article for a pastel journal in which I described Pastels are the Zeppo marks of, of, of media. <laughs> because everybody's kind of aware of it, but nobody sits around and talks about what, what, what his greatest hits were. Uh, and uh, they quickly edited that, that out of my article. They, they <laughs> <laughs> We'd be happy to publish your original article in our newsletter. Would you? Yeah, the Zeppo marks come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'm and serious, I, Brian. I remember I, I took a, a methods and materials class at New Mexico State, and we we used everything, including like fresco, but we never touched on pastel. So, so, and I, I you, you know, you look in the art magazine, there were almost no pastels ever reproduced, and, and you know, they, you'd see you know bad puppy drawings and rosy cheek children drawings, and and, 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 and then I remember like Daniel Green actually was the one artist I could think of that did kind of serious pastels, and. Uh, and then you'd look through history and you'd say to God. And, and so finally, I, I uh, was sitting around one day. I had a couple of, toward the end of my oil painting career, I'd done a bunch of paintings, large oil paintings on heavy watercolor paper and I stored under the bed and the dog was sleeping on them. <laughs> and I, I pulled one of those out and I remember reading that sometimes when Degas got stuck on his oil paintings, he would, he would work over them in pastel. So I, I took one of these, it was a painting of some uh, passengers on the Staten Island Ferry, and I finished it in pastel and it came out pretty cool. So I thought, well, maybe there's a future here. So some of these early ones are, are will be overall oil paintings that didn't work. So this one is not, but the, this is just one that I, I've done about six different versions of this scene, and it, it really is a, uh, it's based on a, a place uh, on the old road between Las Cruces and Hatch, and it, where the river goes through a canyon. <coughs> and uh, all I did is I exaggerated the height of the, the hill, the curve that the, uh, that the road goes around, and then I, I invented the Thunderbird sign just because it's kind of a symbol of old New Mexico, I guess. I always, you know, the, the part of New Mexico that we're quickly losing. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, so I always, always kind of been. Actually, this is the, the card I have on my on my business card. I have this thing, so I just a little bit. So I guess we we can go to the next. How big is that painting? It's probably thirty inches long. So there, medium size. Kind of in the funny order of these up here. This is uh, this is an early one over probably. This is probably over an old, old failed. Oil painting of uh, this was a lot of burger in my neighborhood that was no longer it's no longer there. Although the background is all uh, I borrowed from uh, Hatch. <laughs> uh, and I used to sit in there with a sketchbook and a camera, and I think they like every day for lunch for like a month, and I think they thought I was a weirdo. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, could you speak up just a little oh, bit? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, next, I guess. And if if you guys, when you guys have had enough, just yell. And if you have any questions, just shout them out because I'll get tired of talking. About it. This is uh, this is Hatch. Uh, you'll see. I kind of return to some of the same places and the same images, or not the same themes a lot of time. And they're not really series of paintings, but I just kind of get interested in a place. And, Hatch is, the, is probably the first place where I kind of figure out how to approach New Mexico. Uh, after, after living in Dallas uh, for four years at grad school, they, they got on me for bringing my imagery with me. I was doing paintings in New Mexico, and, and uh, they said, you know, you need, to do, you, do, need to, you need to look at what's around you. And of course, if you've been to Dallas, it's glass towers and, and concrete plazas and and, and uh, so I started crawling around in back alleys and, and shady neighborhoods in Dallas and doing old gas stations. And, and, uh, but, but then when I got back to New Mexico, you know, you just want to go back into the same kind of cliche paintings of New Mexico. So Hatch was the first place. It is the weirdest little town. Uh, it's, it's got these kind of mix of Victorian houses and these the downtown and it, the roofs, a lot of the roofs have those little Alamo type tops so they look like northern Mexico and, and then there's there's uh, all these railroad tracks and, and silos and stuff, uh, many of which have been torn down. And uh, uh, so I, I did a bunch of hatch paintings and uh, this, uh, uh, this building I actually went 
by there recently, and it's, it, it's now a Spanish language fundamentalist church, and it's like, <laughs> blood red. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the site of a New York City bus, and, and uh, these were a couple of friends of mine that I got to pose uh, uh, separately, and then put them in the bus. And, uh, uh, so these are these are some really old ones. Uh, you can tell by the bus that it's pretty old. Is an illustration, right? What's that? Is that an illustration? Was, was this an This was an advertisement on the side of the bus. No, I mean the entire painting. Was that no, no, it was a, it was a painting. painting, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. This is, uh, I, I lived on Long Island for a couple of years. And this, is, this painting is actually now in China, apparently, on a tour with the Pastel Society in America. And this was a, a little beach near where I lived at the, uh, where a creek came out of the woods, and so you're standing with the ocean behind you, looking back toward the, wow. the shore. Yes. Uh, always love this. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's another Long Island painting. So, Brian, um, on your website, you talk about how you take elements from different places and put them in a painting to make it look like a believable place. Yes. Could you talk about that a little bit? I thought that was interesting. I'll be some classic examples. Okay. Of okay. Right. okay. Well, I thought we'd probably yeah. get to that. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it <laughs> okay. all the way. So, I, did, I just wanted to show a few early things. So, oh, yeah. So, okay. so are these actual more places, or did you make these up, kind of? Well, there, you, you would recognize the place oh, if you were there, but there, there are elements changed and moved yeah. and uh, moved around. Uh, a lot of times, it, like, for example, if, if this house isn't interesting enough, I just replace it, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's Artistic license. Yeah. What but size are your paintings? This one's pretty small. I would say it's about... Uh, maybe 20 inches across, shit, something like that. So it looks good. It's good. <laughs> Can I ask the materials you were using then? I'll tell you, I'm not sure, but it, basically what it comes down to, what I work on, you can, you can look at these probably, but it, uh, you work on a Strathmore illustration board, right? and I mount it on birch plywood and then build a one by two frame for the back, and, and, uh, and then I do a watercolor underpainting. So you'll see that. I've got a couple of that coming up, too. So let's, let's go to the next one. Thanks. This is, uh, this is uh, called Dime Toss. And these were results in grad school. Uh, the painter David Bates, who I mentioned, he's the one that had three paintings uh, in the Met by the time he was 35. He, he was a wild man. Uh, <laughs> and he was really into, at the time, he was really into red rooms, you know, Red hands were kind of cartoony stuff. And David uh, would do art in 7-Elevens and uh, gentlemen's clubs and uh, bus stations, and he would just take a sketch pad and just start drawing. So every year when the Texas State Fair came, he would he would come come up to everybody's studio and clean out the art department. We're going to the State Fair. We're going to sketch and and uh, take photos and drink beer and. Uh, <laughs> So I, I kind of forgot about these. I, I stumbled across these photos that I'd taken and years later and decided that, that maybe there was a painting there. And so this was the first. I'd done a bunch of these kind of midway paintings. So this was my, the first of the midway paintings. And uh, over here in the corner, right here. Oh, I forgot. You get your laser. Yeah. A, you better use it. I've dug yeah, it out. I <laughs> Well, I guess I got to hold it down. Yeah. This figure right here, I made my made, made my wife Julie, or asked my wife Julie, who's in the kitchen smoking a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> so I could uh, put her in the corner of that painting. So, uh, Brian, can you tell us? Uh, I know every painting differs, but uh, like the time, days, 
weeks, months? Oh, these can take these can take months. Uh, you know, something like something like this. They're just insane. It's it's a stupid way to work. <laughs> do you work on more than one at a time? I do. Uh, a lot of times, uh, I'll show you when we get when we get. Uh, I have a, uh, an easel space and next to it I have a blank wall where I usually keep one that's either in the underpainting or the drawing stage because the drawing can take a couple of weeks since I make, mix and match. But when I, when I lay something out, I'll, I'll lay out, I'll take a sheet of paper that's larger than what I think the drawing is going to be because a lot of times I'll end up wanting to expand them in one direction or the other. I, I'm not very good at composing a, an already sized yeah. Canvas, so I just make, I just make the canvas whatever it dictates, kind of. Uh, sometimes it wants to go this way or that way, and, and then you just, if you leave enough room, you can go in that direction. It's a, it's another, it's one of those kind of personal things. It's kind of a stupid way to work, but it, it seems to work for me. So, uh, so let's go to the next, next one. This is. Uh, my wife's grandmother lived in a little town in Nebraska, and we'd go up there every summer to visit. And uh, about four o'clock, I'd I'd get tired of the old stories and, and make an excuse to go out and take photos around the, this little town. And it, it was—it's a really—it kind of reminded me of Hatch in a way because it's a railroad town, and now it's half Hispanic because there's a big wheat plant there. So this was a little, the donkey was a little nod to the, the Hispanic, Hispanification of, of this little white bread town in the middle of Nebraska. And uh, that, so this is another one of those things that I like the, like Hatch and the, the State Fair things. I've done a whole series of these in Nebraska. And what is this town? Lexington. Uh, This is another estate fair painting. The museum in New Mexico bought this piece, and it hung in the governor's office for a couple of years uh, uh, for a previous governor. And uh, one of the first official acts of our present governor was to have it removed from the office. <laughs> <laughs> so she got on my bad side before he was a I actually had a friend who worked at the office and would keep me updated. And it disappeared before she actually moved into the office. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, this, this is one of, another one of the hatch pieces. Uh, called Hatch Alley. And, uh, this is the first piece I ended in the entered in the PSA show a years ago in New York. And is this still Nebraska? This is the Hatch. Yeah. I like the little old bench frame. <laughs> Can I ask about that? It seems like you really like all the little stuff people leave behind. Yeah, yeah, and the litter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one is uh, uh, the litter. Yeah, that's right. Now, is that from another painting and you moved it into this one? The litter was, yeah. Uh, and and I, I, like, this building was not there. I put this building in uh, just to kind of close the whole thing a little bit. In, uh, I like the... Uh, Twisted wire that the up here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can move along. Another midway painting from uh, town. This one uh, I had to make up parts of this one because there were this person was actually here. Again. I think she was getting coins off the top. But there was actually an enormous man standing next to her, blocking out the whole center part of the, of the clown show. So I, I had to remove that. <laughs> and that's a pretty big one. That's uh, probably 45 or 50 inches. Okay, move along. This is a. Uh, yeah, 
Mac like this one because he used to work for Plateau. <laughs> uh, this is down off of uh, Broadway and Cesar Chavez, or mm -hmm. somewhere down there. Bridge, one of those mm -hmm. South Valley places. And this, like in this one, this sign was moved from over here just so I can have it in pain. And uh, you just do little things like that to, to uh, make the composition work. And uh, I, I had to get one of those Roadrunner signs in. <laughs> Speaking yes. of stupid details, yeah. Yes. yeah. And that people would laugh when gasoline was like four bucks a gallon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not more. But, so. Okay. This is a, another Long Island piece. This is called uh, called L I R R uh, Long Island Railroad. I just like the both the interior and exterior are all in one one painting. Hopper talked about that when he was writing a review about uh, uh, some Birchfield paintings that, that he liked the idea of, of being both inside and outside at the same time. And, uh, I, I did this painting uh, as I was about to leave New York one of the times. So. New York treated me pretty badly, and you know, I left, left with my tail between my legs twice. So, <laughs> so this was a response to that, I guess. Okay. So this is the Albuquerque Airport. Um, we were sitting there. We were actually flying up for that first Pastel Society of America show, and. Uh, um, there was a guy sitting right here reading a newspaper, and uh, there's a painting. And I started to get my camera out, and he got suspicious, and he starts looking over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and left, but he left his newspaper. So Julie went over and sat down and pretended to read a newspaper. <laughs> and uh, this was the painting that resulted. <coughs> Do you work from camera a lot? I do. I do. Uh, uh, I use a camera, kind of like a sketchbook. Uh, uh, when I find a, a place I like, I end up shooting sometimes thirty or forty images of it. So I just have. Then I have to pick them out. And if I'm using slides, I'll, I'll blow them up into large photographs, or ones that I absolutely need. So my, I've got like painting one of these paintings, like this one I'm working on. I think I've got four or five large photos that I'm drawing parts of it from. So. Uh, it's another kind of stupid way to work. So. <laughs> okay. We can. This is uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. And I, I, on this one, I, I added the little shell sign just because it's kind of a cool sign. <laughs> and add some color. <laughs> This is uh, New York City, uh, and this was just just kind of attracted by all of the sparkles, and then this suspicious-looking woman glaring <laughs> <laughs> out at me. Suspicious looking woman. Oh. Suspicious. How would you know the difference in New York City? Huh? How would you know the difference in New York City that she's suspicious? Well, everybody. <laughs> With good reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> you move along. Next. Just one more. Mac. Yeah. Wake up. Okay. This is. <laughs> no, no, no. Just got to hear. This is Algonona. Yes, it and, is. And I, 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 this one appealed to me because you have this weird situation where the, the, the end of the bridge on your side of the road is farther away from you than the end of the bridge on the other side of the road. So it makes this really weird perspective because they're, they're crossing at such an angle. And uh, um, uh, so that was, that was a challenge that really appealed to me. And then the, the other thing was, uh, was just the beauty of this wall that had been graffiti. Now, I, I added all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I 
and <laughs> this is where the Google comes in. You can Google New Mexico graffiti. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice graffiti. Uh, and the name of this painting is Shaky Town because that's what somebody somebody had sprayed up there. Yeah, this is all added stuff. The the signs and the the little the the and yeah, that's the kind of stuff that's, that's kind of fun to add. I'll put that stuff. And people or or a dog. Some of our my dogs have all in a lot of these. So mm -hmm. so yeah. okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. it, this is uh, Lord Lord and Taylor's in New York. I got yelled at for taking pictures in there by the security guard. Uh -huh. And I, I had Julie pose for the, the clerk here. And she said, well, it's no wonder there's no shoppers. Look how angry I look. <laughs> so, uh, so this one was kind of a nightmare to do. I pictured her going behind the counter and standing there for you. To no, pose. no, she, she, she posed in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This is a pretty big one. This is probably 40 or 45 inches. Like that. That's big for me. So. Okay. This is another Nebraska piece. Uh, I like the, the Grant Wood house right here. It's kind of cool. So I... I uh, would you, well, I would walk around with a camera, and, and luckily Julie's cousin is married to the police chief, so I felt like <laughs> so I know Tracy Wood. Don't or Tracy Wolf. Don't. Uh, I'm not harming anything. So, that, but I, I was going down one of these alleys one day, taking pictures, and this that's a zap who've been there for a couple of days, and and I hear a door slam, and these two little kids come running out, and go, I know who you are. You're the picture man. <laughs> I can the picture of our house. And the funny thing, I actually used their house in an earlier painting from a couple years before. But I'm not sure they, they believed me. I think they were disappointed that I didn't take a picture of their house. So it, was, it was kind of amusing that apparently, I did get actually one of these houses I got confronted in a pleasant way. He wanted to know why I was taking a picture of his house. And so, uh, I just explained. Okay. Good. Brian, do you uh, create the time of day in your paintings, or do you try to take the pictures at those times of day? It just or? depends on. Uh, I. I mean, the I light. Love, the light. I love late afternoon yeah. and even early morning. Uh, but sometimes, you know, midday works better. But even, like this is obviously uh, late evening. Uh, this is. Uh, El Paso, and uh, uh, this was in a show in Dallas. Uh, my, that Roger Winter, who she would do, Betty was reading the essay from. He had a retrospective at a museum in Dallas, and four of his ex-students were in it, including me. And Roger has become kind of a confidant and friend of George W. Bush. Now that he's a painter, even though their politics are polar opposite. <laughs> So he came to the show with his security detail, and Roger oh. lied to him and told him that I had put that W. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a big George W. Bush fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and, so he and I actually, me. I actually, I actually borrowed that from a <laughs> a photo I had of the tracks and hatch, and I didn't know what it was for, but a railroad guy told me it's for whistle. The train is supposed to blow its whistle. Oh. But here's a sad story. Now this, I see, I got this Marlboro thing up here. This is a complex down. As you go into El Paso from the north, this is on the right as you go past UTEP. And it's just this, this beautiful Dutch, Dutch step roof here and this whole complex. And I went down there a couple weeks ago because I got fascinated with the, the border areas of El Paso. And I've been going down there too. Uh, it's all gone. They tore it all down, and I Googled it. This Globe Mills, it was a historic building from 1910s. 
and uh, the El Paso Historical Society was up in arms uh, that it had been torn down, but the Texas Highway Department decided they wanted to, to widen the freeway, and so this is all gone. I was hoping that UTEP would buy it and refurbish it, but uh, it's really sad because it was, it was a kind of a beautiful complex of buildings. So, Anyway. Was that a train station next to the mill? Here? Yeah. No, I, I don't. I think these were all part of the blow mills. I think there was there was an ice plant and a. Uh, this was a actually a, a flour mill, and uh, they had turned one of these into like a homeless shelter. I think the last time I was there. Uh, anyway, and you're right across the. It's a little bit spooky down there. You're right across the, the border. This is. Like a hundred yards from here, you'd be in Mexico. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we go to the next one. This is one called Machine Gun Fun. Um, <laughs> this was a New Mexico State Fair one, and uh, I, I just borrowed these these whirling dealies from another from another booth just because I liked them. <laughs> Can I ask, because of your detail, what kind of pastel are you using? A harder pastel? Uh, I sharpen them. I spend a lot of time sharpening pastels. Uh, but I, I like the harder pastels. I especially whole the whole line. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorites is Faber Castell, which you can no longer get in this country, which is really maddening. I've called them and yelled at them both here and in Germany. And, uh, uh, you know, you can use, I do use a lot of uh, softer pastels too, because there's on some of the really rich colors you can only get in mm -hmm. Sennelier or uh, Unison or one of those. So, uh, I, I won a set of Unison, which is a, I, in, in, I think from the Pastel Journal one year, and I, I thought, I'll never use these. And uh, they sat on my shelf for about, a, about three months just because they were so beautiful. <laughs> and then one day I pulled one off and sharpened it up and it worked just fine and the next thing you know they were all gone. So. <laughs> <laughs> you sharpen a soft pastel with what, a razor blade? You get a no, I, I actually I mount a, kind of a heavy sandpaper onto a one by, one by four and just spend a lot of time doing that. So And then scraping the dust into the trash can. So we can go to the next one. Okay, this is one. This is one you'll see the, how the, the underpainting works. The Pastel Journal called me and wanted to do an article in which I talked about how I how I work. And the one thing I didn't have was the, the pencil drawing for this because I, I'd already started it. But what I'll do is I'll get an idea and I'll start the pencil drawing, and it sits on the wall next to my easel of whatever I'm working on. And so I can look at it in between and, and get ideas on how to change it, what needs to, what's not working, what's working, what to add, what to subtract. So, um, so this is the finished piece of, uh, called Drown Clown. Now this is this is another one. I made up this sign, and these clowns I borrowed from a, from another booth just because they're so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and and. Uh, and it's kind of a it's kind of a takeoff on the way we trivialize violence, just like the machine gun fun. Uh, you know, here you are basically supposed to shoot these. They're just water guns, but you're supposed to shoot at the clown's mouth, I guess. And uh, just the whole idea of driving a clown. <laughs> Everybody's had problems with clowns in their life. <laughs> so. Uh, we can go to the next, the next one's a detail of the figure. And then the, the next one you'll see just the underpainting. Okay, okay, and then here's the, here's, you can see kind of a watercolor <coughs> underpainting. And uh, it's pretty crude. And <laughs> And this is a cold press? I'm sorry. It's on. It's on. Uh, it's on um, illustration board, and it's 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 the one. It's I think they call it the vellum. It's a bumpy one. Not the yeah, smooth. not the smooth. Um, 
And if I need more tubes, I'll, I'll give it a little dose of, uh, of uh, uh, fixative sometimes. So you can see I changed this figure. She, in this one, she's kind of looking out to the side, and then I changed it to she's looking forward. This I thought it was a little too distracting. But anyway, then the next one you can see is uh, an image of it after I started to apply a little bit of Pastel. Next one. So you can see it's, it's put on almost in a scribble form at first, just trying to get the paper cover, cover, covered. Yeah. So, so we go to the next one. Mm -hmm. I think the next one's an underpainting too. Yeah, yeah. This is, here's one on there. So this is, this is a, just a watercolor. And I think it might have a, just some pastels smeared on it as well. This is uh, New Orleans. Uh, uh, and then we'll <coughs> go to the next. This is a, called Chapatulis, and this was shortly before Katrina. I was just down there at Christmas, but I didn't get a chance to go over and see if this is still there. But uh, I think this is kind of, it's near, it's not too far from the high part of, uh, of New Orleans, so it probably survived okay. But I, I think this is one of the bridges where the people were had to camp out for three or four days. So we go to the next one. Okay, this this is one I say this is the one this is the one where the owner confronted me. When I, this is another Lexington piece, and this is kind of a classic example of how I'll pick and choose. Uh, this house. We were there, we went back there for four or five years, and he never finished his porch. <laughs> he had no railing on it, and none of this stuff down here. And he had little kids, and I just wondered, well, did they just use the back door all the time and lock the door? Because it was about a four or five foot drop to, to get off there. And, uh, and uh, so I, I had some pictures of a house in Long Island, and I borrowed the, the railings and this this lattice from, from that <laughs> and filled it in and just kind of made up the bushes. And then this uh, this little pine tree was from, from the Pecos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these little wooden flowers were from another yard in Long Island just because I, I wanted to add a little interest up in the front. And uh, I actually just finished a painting with this building and it's seen from the alley beyond here, looking the other way. So it's, it, it's probably the last of the Lexington pieces. And then this was this was one of our dogs that I still come to. <laughs> this is another one of the Chinese jewelry stores. Uh, well, I haven't shown any of these yet. This, uh, I got fascinated. Uh, a friend of mine who, who bought a bunch of my paintings uh, invited me to come up to New York shortly after 9-11. I hadn't been back in about 10 years. And uh, she said, do any paintings in New York and I'll buy them, whatever you do. So that's a pretty nice commission to get. Uh, and one of the things I stumbled across was these Chinese uh, jewelry stores down on Canal Street. And they're just kind of fascinating places. I've, I've done about four of these. And the one she, this isn't the one she bought. The one she, that she bought almost got destroyed because she, when I sent it to her, she set it up on her dresser to look at it before taking the framer and the maid came in and dusted it. Oh. And luckily, before she got too far, she realized what she'd done and, uh, and uh, uh, had, had kind of just wiped out the upper right corner. Oh. <laughs> so that's what she's passed all nightmare <laughs> And this one, this one, kind of a, you know, one of those things they tell you never to do is put something big in the middle. And so I, yeah. uh, but I'll see if I can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go to the next one. Now this is this is another one uh, that's down on Broadway, and this is now a tire shop, I think. And then. Uh, I added, this billboard was farther up on Broadway, and this house was about half a mile away on Broadway, but it was more interesting than the house that was there. So I just I just moved it over uh, uh, because it, it kind of went with the whole thing. So. 
Any questions? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the amount of detail you include in your paintings, you've got to have a really steady hand. Do you use a ball stick or anything like that? Yeah, I actually just, just I actually made just a, out of a, a piece of lattice that I, I I varnished. Now I actually use a like I got a, a one of those ninety nine cent yardsticks from Lowe's and, and varnished it, and I, uh, I use that to steady. I this what I'll do like the, this one. These paintings, if you want to come up and look at these, I've got three paintings up here. One which is fairly close to being done, and the other two is just the underpainting with a little bit of pastel on it. And I put a, a lattice, black lattice, around the edge so that so that the when I do use the ball stick, it rest, actually rests on the lattice rather than the edge of the painting. So, so yeah, that's how I. Uh, it's definitely you definitely need both hands a lot, except in the early stages. So. So, so we can go to the next one, I guess. This is, this is another Lexington piece. And, and I add little details like that and that. And uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe is from right here in Old Town. <laughs> <laughs> that little, uh, there's a little uh, chapel over there uh, behind the museum, actually. You can get there from the back side of the museum. And, uh, See, that was another kind of nod to the, this, the how Hispanic the name this this Middle American town is getting. Uh, actually, now the latest thing is they're getting a bunch of Somali and Sudanese, so there's an African restaurant there. Oh. Oh. Pretty wild. And my, and my Julie's uncle had two Somali doctors living behind him who he was just sure were, were drug dealers. <laughs> 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 so... Uh, yeah, that's what we're trying to tell us. So, we can go to the next one. This is Colorado, uh, uh, up by Lake City, kind of. Just like the patterns in the, the fields and also in We can go to the next one. This is. Uh, a story of Oregon, and uh, I named this one the Crooked Steps because you can see that these are not quite in perspective. And when I told Julie what the name of it was, she said, my wife, she said, you just did that because you wanted people to know that you, you did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not bad drawing. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> And then this, this house was actually in downtown Albuquerque because the house that was there was just a stucco house and it was pretty boring and uh, didn't, didn't really fit with that kind of northwestern feel. And uh, so I, I stuck that house in and, and then this, this stump was in our neighborhood and we'd walk our dogs by it. I, I stuck that in there. And the automobile, I had to look up old autos and stuck it in this cardboard over here. So, so do you pin up all these different photographs to work from, or do you use yeah. a computer and... Oh, no, you know, that's funny. I've got one coming up that where I'll, I'll talk about photoshopping because I'm, I'm clueless. So, <laughs> uh, so we can go to the next one. This is, this is a little... This is on etching paper. This was a failed etching. Uh, I mean, uh, this was just one that I... The etching worked fine, but this is one that didn't print very well. So I just uh, used it as the drawing, used the etching as the drawing. And, uh, so it's really small, and you can see it's, it's got a different feel because it's, the paper is pretty textured. Uh, and this one I, I donated to the Pastel Society last year for their, their raffle. Uh, and then, let me go to the next one. Okay, here's, here's one of the El Paso ones. This is the, what I've been starting to get fascinated with is that a lot of, since Juarez is such a mess, a lot of those businesses have started moving across the border, uh, kind of south of where their museum is, between there and the border. And, and it's really these wild quinceanera shops with these amazing gowns. And then these, these little, teeny <coughs> tiny uh, mannequins miniature mannequins in full dress and it, it just makes for kind of a, a surreal image 
uh, even though it's right there. And I made Julie pose in front of the sliding door because I, there was a, like once again, there was like a fat guy. <laughs> so I've done uh, a couple of these, and my, one of my latest obsessions. So we can go to the next one. Oh, there's oh, there's a close-up of the little, yeah. the weird little man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're really creepy. This one looks almost boy ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was uh, Florence. Have, have any of you ever seen the movie Obsession? Cliff Robertson and, and uh, Lithgow, John Lithgow and, and uh, Genevieve Bougeau. A lot of it takes place. This is a, on a hilltop across the river from, from Florence. It's a place called San Miniato. And a lot of that movie, it's a, it, it was Brian De Palma's first movie. And it's a really creepy movie that makes no sense. But a lot of it is just Cliff Robertson staring creepily at Genevieve Bougeau. <laughs> <laughs> she's working in the church, and it's behind you where you stand here. And uh, there's this weird cemetery. It's on a hilltop, and the cemetery is on all these different levels. And it's got all these monuments just placed around it like a weird checkerboard. And uh, a lot of them are really abstract, and there's like guys with bowler hats on, and it just, it just was the weirdest place. And, uh, and then I, I added Julie, and one of our dogs down here, this dog was sick while we were, we thought he was going to die on us while we were in Italy, and he, he died a few days after we got back, so mm -hmm. I put him in there, just, yeah. just a memorial, one of those stupid little things that, that you do. Did, did this painting, I've seen that painting before, did it win something or was it published somewhere? It won uh, the top prize at the Pastel Society four years ago. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so this is, this is actually kind of the back streets of Venice. And I, I love this little, this little wall shrine. And uh, when I started out this painting, this this little alley over here, I had put this like really bright, sunny, Curico-esque alley with all these shadows that was pretty cool, but it just overpowered the rest of the painting. So I spent the whole a whole day basically just wiping it all out and replacing it with this, these very uh, subdued buildings. And the only thing I kept were the, was the, the laundry uh, that was, was hanging out on the lawn. I think it, 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 it may work a little better. And then Julie said, you need something in that alley. And so I had to the little dog in the corner. And, then, uh, uh, I think it's this is Taos, uh, Cemetery in Taos. Now, I simplified it quite a bit and uh, rearranged stuff. And uh, this little angel is in a cemetery on the backside of Sandias. And I, I just really liked, liked the figure. So I, I, I put it in with, the, with this beautiful little cemetery uh, and, and, uh, and then added the magpie. <coughs> and, uh, and the Christmas lights. and. and uh, it just, I don't know, it's, the person who bought it said, I just basically said, I, I bought this because I want to be buried there. <laughs> Let me go to the next one. I guess. So this is the, the quinceanera dress one that you saw. Uh, I had two people fighting over it, and the guy didn't, that didn't get it was really angry. So I had a show at the... Grace Museum in Abilene a few years ago, and we were, Julie and I were walking the dog around, when well, we went to the opening, we were walking the dog around the block, and we came across this Hispanic dress shop, and, uh, you know, with these, this wild little mannequin, and I thought, okay, well, there's one for the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he actually liked it better than the one he didn't get, so... 
But this one was really, I, I literally had to sit down and draw, draw it out because some of these images are reflected twice. You can see some of the writing's backwards and some of it's not because it's reflected twice. And so, uh, it was a headache to, to lay this one out because you're, you're trying to figure out. So I had to kind of do an aerial drawing of the geometry of it to see how, how it is that everything was reflected the way it looked. Okay. Close up. So you can see they're they're fairly loosely painted right there. Yeah. You see it's close. It's not fun. No. no. So this 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 is an interesting. This is the first drawing I ever used Google. Maps or Google Earth, whichever one it is for. I uh, this is Astoria again, and it's the, it, this town is just built on this unbelievable hillside because it's right at the mouth of the Columbia River. And uh, I was looking on Google Earth because I could see that this street was Franklin Street, but I couldn't see what this was. And I, the name of this painting is Franklin and Eighth Street, so I Google Google mapped it. And figured out it was Google, it was Franklin A. And then I, I thought, well, I'll go down to the street view. And I went down to the street view, and it was almost the same. The truck, of course, obviously was on the other side of the, the street, but it was almost the same perspective, although it, it was a really cloudy day when, when those were. But I got some of the detail stuff, like this thing mm -hmm. and some of these hanging plants from, <laughs> from using Google Earth. <laughs> and and uh, so I was telling. I'm, you're all familiar with Bill Creevy, yeah, the yeah, pastel book. Yeah. I was telling Bill about it. He said, oh, yeah, I've already used Google Earth to do some paintings. He said, you know, I was, I was uh, interested in a place in Los Angeles, and when I, I looked it up, it wasn't that interesting. But the view across the parking lot was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a painting of it. I thought, okay, well, I'm, I'm behind the time again. <laughs> so. Okay. This is uh, San Leonardo Lake uh, up in the Pecos. And I just like the, the shape of these, these kind of double diamond shape in the water and this kind of menacing log uh, and the, the silhouette of these trees. Uh, just, and this is a big piece. It, it's pretty simple, but it's, it's bigger than I usually was. This is uh, Las Vegas again. And, uh, uh, I just like these these two houses. They're so muted in color uh, that I kind of like the way they fit together. And then this, a lot of the color in this piece is actually in the reflected window. I added all this striping, and I, I thought it was kind of humorous to put a handicap on a really steep. You can't really see there's a restaurant down back down the street, and I think it actually has an elk on it, but I changed it to a high howling coyote. Oh. <laughs> um, and just kind of put these New Mexico symbols in here, and then it, I think there's a little version of Guadalupe there, <laughs> and like a low rider sign. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then the, the last little bit of stupid stuff that I do. When we were in Florence, I photographed this, this graffiti of a running dog, and this was great right after we lost our little chow, so I changed it to a little chow and, and, and graffitied it onto the wall right here. Uh, uh, just kind of as a memorial to her. So, uh, they're just little kind of fun notes to myself, I guess. Uh, this is the piece I just sent to the Pastel Society in New York. This is called East on Canal. And this is the, probably the last of the, of the Chinese jewelry store pieces. And that, uh, I used the same clerk in an earlier drawing. Uh, in a, she was in a different pose. I took a whole bunch of pictures, and by the last picture, she realized I was there and was glaring at me. And I, I thought the next the next step is the security guy coming out the door. So I quickly waved. I waved and, and quickly left. So. Uh, 
and I, I, I actually uh, that, that Chinese um, Chinese uh, community center up off of Central, and it's near uh, Teresa's frame shop. And I stopped mm -hmm. in there one day to ask him what this oh. this meant because I was looking for a title. And they they told me it just meant like business is booming or prosperity. So uh, that, that didn't really work as a title. So, so we go to the next one. This is a Central Park. And that's kind of a fuzzy image. Next, I guess. Uh, I have to, speaking of Bill Kirby, when I finish a piece, a lot of times they'll send me an image out. And I'll get back these reviews from some people sometimes. And I got one from Kirby about this one. He thinks I'm uh, the most depressing artist since Edward Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I, the, I thought, this is Long Island. I thought this was an in, in, innocent enough painting. Uh, but here's Creevy's review of it. He says, he says, please take this as a compliment. This one is beautiful, but the most suicide, mo the mood is suicidally depressing, <laughs> at least to me. It says, I have to be careful with autumn, the raking light of the sun in late, late October, uh, in the late October sunset. Where's that revolver? <laughs> <laughs> the feeling of this landscape to me is that my parents have divorced and they sent me off to a private school up north and I know absolutely no one there. My life is over. <laughs> says, says, uh, Kabul will show you a world of wondrous beauty, full of the things, the good things of life, but you still want to show, throw yourself in front of a moving car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 he'll, he'll finish it by, by saying something like, one of your best. <laughs> I, I sent him one, I sent him one of Los Ojos recently, and it had a, an abandoned motel in the front. And he goes, he sent back this thing about, I uh, thought, it re literally, one of your best, this looks like the kind of place you want a person would go to drink themselves to death. <laughs> 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 so there you go. It, 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 uh, I guess people look at look at work uh, different. I mean, I don't find my work depressing. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> autumn. It's pretty good. We can go to the next one. Uh, this is a little one. This one I just finished recently. This is a... Uh, Swamp in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Where's the water in Arkansas? Yeah, this is, this is full of gators and moccasins. And uh, it's. Uh, oh, is that right off like Highway 40? It's. Um, it's, it's north of uh, Texarkana. It's near Hope. Bill Clinton's old. Hope I get out of here. So this, this uh, these are just kind of fun little paintings again, uh, and they're they're highly sellable in Texas. So, uh, <laughs> so when yeah. you say small, how small? This I think this was like eleven by fourteen. Or something like that. Mm. <laughs> so we have about two minutes left. Okay, well, and you got about two done. more slides. Oh, all right. This is uh, Trombus Lakes. Uh, this is hanging in our living room because Julie would not sell it. Um. <laughs> and that's the flue that's up there? What's that? And that's the flue that's up there in, at Trumpus? No, no, this is this is uh, Trumpus Lakes. It's about a 16-mile hike up into the mountains oh. round trip. So it's, it's a good... Uh, it, it, a couple of small hikes up at about 11,500 feet. So it's... Mm. So we can go to the last one. Oh, uh, that, uh, this is Squam uh, up, on, up in the Olympic Peninsula, Mexican. Uh, and this one was done on a, a sanded paper, so it's a little, it's a little uh, looser, I guess. So I think that was. I think we. I sent you the wrong one. Oh, this is the one I want to talk about yeah. really quickly. Uh, when you were talking about photoshopping. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, some photos I had of a street in Lexington, 
Nebraska. And I love these silos in the window. This door was empty. There was nothing in it. So I, I was ruminating on this painting for months. One day, Julie and I were having lunch in Yanni's. And I looked across the street to that off-Broadway place yeah. where they, have, they sell the, the vintage clothing. And then she had this sign that says prom night. And then these, these ridiculous gowns on these. And I thought, that's it. <laughs> so I, I put, put those, uh, I used those to, to put, and then I had the little running Budweiser, running pheasant because it's cool. And uh, so, but anyway, when I told the guy at Artisan, who was a really good realist painter, I was telling him about the Venice painting, he said, well, did you Photoshop it? And, and I said, I don't know how to Photoshop it, I just drew it in, you know. So, so I guess methods are changing and I'm behind the time. So, uh, so I guess that's the last one? I think so. Yeah. So they had timing with perfect ways. You talk? So if you want to, when the lights come back on, if you want to look at these, you can see a little bit more.